time to get up. Have you been reading the headlines lately? We're having a pretty bad flu season this year. I mean, it's been bad every year, but according to the headlines, this is the worst ever. And we're all gonna die! But I am taking all the precautions and protections I can find on a shoestring budget in order to avoid a... Huh? Ah, shoot! Oh, fuck. Yeah, it seems no matter. Yeah. It seems no matter what you do, you are always doomed to get sick. Then again, it's not like people take any precautions. Seriously, people, when you cough, cough into your f***ing elbow. Disgusting. Then again, maybe I shouldn't have kissed my partner when he was sick. Hindsight's 2020. What is this? Quality first episode of the year. Anyway, we are finally back. I know I was planning to come back in January, but I really, really needed to recharge because this year is a whole bunch of new. New year, new plans, new camera, new mic. And pushing forward with my new style, starting with the first author you guys voted for, Michael Crichton. Crichton's impact on the cultural zeitgeist cannot be underestimated. He not only wrote several well-beloved novels, he wrote screenplays, directed feature films, many of his books getting a major film adaptation, a programmer, a doctor which he would use his experience to create one of the most influential TV shows ever. <sighs> the point is, Crichton left an impact in his 40 years as a cultural figure, and it all started with his first novel, 1969's The Andromeda Strand. And yes, Crichton fans, I know this isn't his first novel. We all know he wrote under a pseudonym, but those were to help pay the bill, so odds are they are mostly crap. Maybe not, but maybe there was a reason we didn't learn about them until he died. Just saying. All the while, Andromeda is the first book published under his name and would set up the writing and career he would later have. This is the book that started it all. So without further ado, good morning, good evening, good wherever you may be. My name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to my review and analysis of Michael Crichton's The Andromeda Strand, or... Oh boy, how do I explain this? Well, first the premise. Okay, picture it. It's the height of the space race. The US and Russia are fighting to dominate the stars with several space projects. One of those projects is called Scoop, a satellite program used to collect upper atmosphere microorganisms. I hope you like big words, honey, because I'll be mispronouncing a lot today. That at first looks to be used for study, but the true aims of Scoop were to find new life forms that might benefit the Fort Derrick program. In essence, it was a study to discover new biological weapons of war. Oh, so a uh, Yay, chemtrail, lizard illuminati, fluorite, soy bomb. Most trips have yielded little to no results, thank god. That is till Scoop 7 has an unexpected landing in the small desert town of... Piedmont? Piedmont? Potty? How am I not able to say that? Piedmont. Piedmont. Piedmont, Arizona. How could I not say that? A recovery team goes to find it, but only finds bodies laying on the street. Men, women, children, not a soul left alive. But then, Sean, Jesus, Crane, you see him, the man in the white robe, walking across the street. Sean, I see him, Crane, he's just stepping over them like, Sean, he's coming towards us. Crane, sir, look, I think we should get out of here, if you don't mind my, the next sound was a high-pitched scream and a crunchy noise. How's that for an opening? Why do I think this is boring? Seeing they are dealing with a deadly biological threat, the government activates Project Wildfire, collecting five of the country's best scientists of different fields to identify and neutralize the threat. In their biosuits, they explore the town to understand some of the effects of the mysterious biohazard, like how it kills its victims by clotting their blood. Any idea what can clot people this way? The whole vesicular system? By force of blood? No. But then they find the mysterious man in white. What's your name? Jackson. Peter Jackson. Oh no! There's your threat! He forced everyone into watching a Lord of the Rings marathon, including The Hobbit! Extended edition! Quick, stop him before he puts on the lonely bones! Bad jokes aside, Peter Jackson, 
I'm never going to get that image out of my head. Isn't the only survivor. They find a crying baby as well and take the two to a special underground lab in Nevada where they hope to figure out the soon to be named Andromeda strand before it comes into contact with a heavily populated area. But how did an old man and crying baby survive this deadly disease? And what key do they hold to mankind's survival? These two people, dissimilar though they were, nonetheless represented the only survivors of Piedmont. Somehow, they have managed to beat the disease. That was the link between the two, between the shriveled old man vomiting blood and the pink young child, howling and screaming. With a premise like that, how can I say this is boring? Honestly, I'm just as shocked as you are that this is my takeaway. To be fair, I haven't read much Michael Crichton. The only book I ever read was Jurassic Park, and I did a video on that a while back. But it's from my experience reading that that has colored my perception while reading The Andromeda Strand. Though, it's not like this isn't out of his wheelhouse. Crichton made a name for himself writing techno thrillers with a hard sci-fi edge, telling outlandish stories that telling outlandish stories oh my god i can't say that telling outlandish stories that could almost happen nailed it so how can i say a story about an extraterrestrial virus be boring here's the thing it has all of the elements but for me the andromeda strand is a short story premise expanded into a novel and it shows in the science now i don't mean Crichton went too hard on the science that's his M.O. Just like Jurassic Park, Crichton features a host of references he used to help flesh out the concept, as well as showcasing several diagrams to show the science on display because, let's face it, he's talking about things most of us don't know about. The science isn't so much the problem, it's how he goes about telling it. See, the structure of the Andromeda Strand is something you would see more in a science journal or a non-fiction book. A lot of the reason why can be viewed on Crichton's own website, from how he liked the name of the title but couldn't figure out what to write, to his editor Bob Gottlieb, Gotta, oh god, not again. German, Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Bob Gottlieb. Ugh. Saying the novel should read like a New Yorker profile. By the way, I have to quickly say, Crichton's website is one of the best author sites I've seen. Clean, simple, filled with nice trivia, a good place for fans old and new alike. Now back on track, doing a book like The New Yorker isn't bad. It's actually what gave the book so much attention. Many people feeling that instead of being a fictional story that this actually happened and we were that close to total annihilation. However, as I was reading it, I found myself not getting into it as others have. And the reason is, while the science is there, the characters are not. This is what affected me so much. While the book goes on and on with the science, you find that same attention to detail isn't given to the characters. Most of them don't have much outside of their roles. Like the military guy, or the research guy, or worse, the scientist. Lord help you if you were a scientist. In the end, the book follows four scientists as they try to figure out what the Andromeda Strand is, but lord help me, I could never tell them apart. The only one who leaves any impact is one named Hal, and that's because he's seen as an odd man out of the rest, while the others are, oh boy, big words again, bacteriologists, pathologists, and microbiologists. Hal is a surgeon hired because of the odd man hypothesis, a fictional thing the book made up because the lab they are in can blow up if anything tries to escape. And since Hal is single, he can make the most accurate choice if the lab needs to blow up during an escape. It's just an excuse so the book can have a climax. But even with a plotline like that, Hal barely stands out from the crowd. He only stands out because he gets the most page time. But other than that, the scientists might as well all be the same person. A lot of that is, again, with the writing style. It creates a form of detachment that's supposed to make you feel you aren't reading a story, but in the end, it also makes it hard for you to relate to anyone, especially with how the book ends overall. Which really ends in the most dull way possible. So, spoilers, but the way the book ends is... Nothing happens. They figure out Andromeda always mutates, and for a while, it attacks human blood because of its pH value. The old man and baby survive because they changed their pH value to make the strand powerless. 
the baby by crying, and the old man by drinking Strano because of his ulcer. They then discover nuclear energy can cause the strand to multiply faster, which when the strand escapes after mutating to the point of being harmless to humans, makes the lab blowing up a bad idea. It's a uh, nuclear power, you see, making it a race to shut down the lab from exploding. You know, one of those flip the scenario things, classic sci-fi, oh the foils of humanity the book won't shut up about. They stop it, and the strand goes back into space. That's it. That's how the book ends. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Say what you will about the miniseries with this sentient time-traveling virus, but at least that was something. Granted, it was a stupid something, but a something nonetheless. So, is it worth reading? Eh, yes and no. Like I said, the book feels like a short story premise, expanded to novel length, because all we have is the premise with very little character to back it up, which can work better in a short story or a novella format, but a novel? <clears throat> Girl, no. 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 Girl, no. And it's not like I would ask for much. All Crichton needed to do was give the characters more development. Beef them up. Give them an identity. History. An arc. Anything that doesn't sound like an audiobook read by Ben Stein. Bueller? Bueller? Heck, you want to know what was one of the most disturbing things in the book for me? It has nothing to do with the virus. It's when the scientist dissects a man to learn about the virus's properties, but they don't do it in a lab, but in his house. And they don't do little cuts, but full-on frog dissection biology class. In his home where his dead wife and son are in the next room. I know you're scientists and all, but seeing that happen with next to no comment was just... What the hell, man? And a lot of that comes from my experience with Jurassic Park. That book was able to find the balance between explaining hard sci-fi while having compelling characters. So seeing a book like this shows that Crichton had a ways to go before really hitting his stride. I have avoided the temptation to simplify both the issues and the answers, and if the reader must occasionally struggle through an arid passage of technical detail, I apologize. Eh, no hard feelings, dude. It was your first book, and I get what you were trying to do. A more or less recreation of how we would have dealt with a biological threat. Shoot, the Ebola outbreak we had a few years ago pretty much shows how this story isn't just fiction. But there's more to these stories than just the main threat. There's human drama in all of it, and I wish you would have included that more. Though that doesn't stop you from saying how much we humans suck. At least that Crichton trope started from the beginning. As in most crises, the events surrounding the Andromeda Strand were a compound of foresight and foolishness, innocence and ignorance. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Nearly everyone involved had moments of great brilliance and moments of unaccountable stupidity. The whole book boiled down to a single sentence. Time to wrap up. The Andromeda Strand can be a fascinating kind of book, and it's not all boring. It does get good near the end when the characters actually have a chance to be characters. But for me, the cold, disengaging writing style didn't work and hurts the book's overall enjoyment. I would recommend it at best as a curiosity, or if you wanted to see how Michael Crichton started to learn his craft. But outside of that, I can't recommend it on any merits. But then again, those are my thoughts on the Andromeda Strain. Stran? Strain? Strain? Hold on. Strain. 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 Andromeda. Strain. Ah! Oh, hey! Thanks for watching! So, what did you think about the Andromeda Strain? Did you find it boring like me? Let me know in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe for more book reviews. But before you go, I have a thing to ask you guys. Last December, I covered the genre of sci-fi, but in April, I want you guys to help me figure out what I will cover next. And I have four options for you. Furry Month, a highly requested topic. Marvel Comics, because Marvel is awesome. Best of 2017, because there are many current reads that I haven't read. And Open Letter Books aka international books. Feel free to vote in the comments or the eye icon and I will see you next week as we continue to look at Crichton with hopefully better results.
Till next time, fellow bookworms. Have a nice day.